Okay, another A-level physics um, question from the AQA. Mechanics topic and um, the obsession with tennis balls continues. Right, so pause the video and read the question if you haven't already. Uh, first part of the question is a show that. In other words, they give you the answer, but they expect you to come to the answer as well. Okay, and it really requires you to understand that definition of momentum again. So, uh, well, in terms of force anyway. So, since F equals MA, we can think of that also as being MV over T, because acceleration is change of velocity over time. So, if you multiply both sides by T, you get FT equals MV. This is why you can actually have the units of momentum being Newton seconds or being kilogram meters per second because you've got the M, V and F, T. They both basically are the same thing. Um, so the F, T bit is going to be equal to the impulse or the change in momentum. This is a graph of force against time. So the area underneath the graph is force times time. Um, and it will tell us the change of momentum of the tennis ball. So we've got to get the area, right? You must also notice that it's meters, sorry, milliseconds, milliseconds times 10 to the minus three. You should really learn your prefixes. Um, so I'm looking for this area, right? Uh, so it's a triangle. I can still use half base times height for this. Half the base, which is 25 times Oh, it's 25 milliseconds, nearly missed it. 25 times 10 to the minus 3 multiplied by the height. Um, and these lines actually make it a bit difficult to read, but that's 100 there, that's 120 there. So that's 100. What's each square worth? Well, there's five squares. Five squares. So worth two each, so it's basically a hundred and, well from what I'm reading here it's a hundred and four, but I, I don't think the graph's very easy to read. The mark scheme says it's 106, so I'll go with a 106 value. You do get a bit of leeway on this question for errors within readings, okay? And uh, the way it's been reproduced, um, so if you got this from the exam board and they printed it, then the mar then whatever you read on the paper there would be what what would be correct. Since this has been reproduced, it's been reproduced digitally. Things get stretched, scaled badly. It's hard to read, so uh, we can kind of allow a bit of a mistake with that. But anyway, calculating this gives me a value of 1.32 um, newtons. So, sorry, newton seconds, not newtons per second. My mistake. Um, Right. Okay. So basically, it's approximately the same as 1.3, which is what we we're looking for. Next bit: the mass of the tennis ball is 0 0.057 kilograms. Show that the impulse in part 1a gives a, the ball a speed of about 20 meters per second horizontally as the ball leaves the racket. Okay. So we can go back to this since Ft equals m. V, and we've just calculated FT. Dividing both sides by M, FT over M, will give me V. So FT I've just calculated is 1.32. M is 0 0.057. Okay. And calculating this gets me 23.2 meters per second. Again, it's a show that question. So it's approximately this, so I know I'm on the right track. Okay, and that is the correct value. All right, so final part of the question. During the flight, the ball accelerates due to gravity, and when it reaches the ground, the vertical component of its velocity is 6.1 meters per second. So we can imagine that the ball got whacked this way, 23 meters per second, 23.2 meters per second, sorry, which is what we calculated previously. It follows a parabolic curve, Right, something like this. Hits the ground. When it hits the ground, it's asking what is its actual velocity at that point in time. So you want the speed and the angle, right? So because you can treat horizontal and vertical components of 
velocity separately in parabolic motion, we know it's going to hit the ground going horizontally still at 23.2, but it's going to have a vertical of 6.1. Okay, And we need to get its actual velocity, which is going to be this component here. Not component, actually. That's the actual velocity, and these are the components of it in the horizontal and vertical. So um, calculating this is just going to be a simple case of application of Pythagoras. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Root both sides. Cancels, cancels. So C equals the square root of 23.2. Sorry, so the square of 23.2 plus 6.1 squared. And crunching through the calculator gets me a value of 23.9 something, 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 something. So basically 24 meters per second. So this value here is actually 24. And I need the angle. And I'm going to give the angle to the horizontal. Direction of travel of the ball to the horizontal is what it asks for. All right, so that would be this angle here. OK. So I'm going to, as I always do, label up the triangle. Hypotenuse, this is the opposite. This is the adjacent. Now I want to use the values they've given me. Um, so the 6.1, I don't want to use the one I've just calculated. Although I did calculate this, I know this one's correct from the previous part of the question because it, uh, it was part of the show that question. So I'll use these two values to calculate the angle. So I'm using opposite and adjacent. So if you, however you do your trigonometry, but SOCAR TOA, tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. And the opposite is 6.1 divided by the adjacent, which is 23.2. Okay, calculating this ratio and then taking the inverse of tan to get rid of the tan to get the angle on its own. Um, so this, when calculated, gives me the value of 14.7 degrees. Okay. Okay, I hope you found this question um, work solution helpful. Thanks for watching. Please comment, share, and like.